All right, hey there, good morning, and welcome to the Jeep Saw Garage. So this is my Wednesday morning live stream, a good chance to grab a cup of coffee, chat with me, and I can see your comments in real time, respond to you guys, just a fun way to connect. And then I also have on, my, on Fridays my regular uh, edited videos. So thanks for joining, uh, grab a cup of coffee, and let's get started. We've got a few people hopping on here, so we'll uh, run through real quick the the question I'm going to answer, I got a, actually a comment <clears throat> from one of my patrons. Thank you so much. I appreciate the support. Uh, he was asking about removing the engine. Uh, I do have, at the, I have a whole series on rebuilding the engine from start to finish. Pulling the engine out, rebuilding the engine, putting it back in. Every step that I did all along the way. I think it's like, I don't know, it's like a 28 or 26 video series. There's a lot of videos. There's a video in there at the end where I talk about like lessons learned and tips and tricks. There's some good stuff in there. If you're removing the engine, replacing the engine, it's a good, uh, really good reference. I think it's helped out a lot of people. And I definitely learned uh, a lot of things about <clears throat> rebuilding the uh, four liter engine. So this is on a uh, 4.0 Jeep Wrangler YJs, but a lot of the uh, uh, things apply to the other vehicles, Cherokees, etc. So let's see. Good morning, everybody. R. Flores is on. Bronco Solid's on. Let me update my chat here. Sometimes my tablet here, as you guys know, that follow me, I gotta <clears throat> close that down real quick, pull it back up. There they are. Frank's here. Mr. W, good morning. Uh, Good find. He's had that for quite a while. Stroker build parts are on back order. Yes. <clears throat> so this engine, this is another 4.0. Uh, and yeah, my plan is to turn this into a stroker build. It'd be awesome. I have some of the parts, but I'm still waiting on crankshaft and rod. Those are on back order. They're just really hard to find right now, which is a bummer because I know I, I get comments. People are asking like, this series didn't die, did it? Like, are you gonna do the stroker build? Yes, yes, I'm gonna do it. Um, I'm just still waiting on parts. So that's the one struggle right now. But uh, <clears throat> for my patron uh, that asked about, his question was on uh, removing the engine, like essentially like how hard is it? What all do you have to remove? I'm not going to go over like every little thing because there's there's a lot of part. I mean, there's a 28 video 28 video series series on it. So there's a lot going on with it. Hey, I'm going to unplug your unplug you guys here. Can't be that hard, right? No, it's really not. Like if I can do it, I mean you can do it. It's it's really not that hard. Sorry if the audio changed there a little bit. Had to unplug the mic so I can make you guys portable. <clears throat> And the reason, like, yeah, saying it's really not that hard. Like, if you look at removing the engine, if you look at it in, like, a total, like, what, to, what was that word? Total, totality? In totality? Uh, it looks like just a super intimidating job. Like, there's so much. But when I face projects like that, what I like to do is I like to start looking at it, like, piece by piece. Don't look at the whole thing say, yes, you know, my ultimate goal is to remove the engine for whatever reason, <clears throat> but, uh, and that's, can be absolutely overwhelming. But uh, when you start looking at it just piece by piece, like, okay, battery, or disconnect the battery, take the battery out, right? Easy, we know how to do that. <clears throat> then we're gonna go along and we're gonna, uh, we're gonna drain the radiator because we're gonna be removing that. It's really not that hard to drain the radiator get the hoses off, like removing hoses. When you start looking at things just one by one, it's really not hard. So then uh, obviously, you know, a lot of the stuff on the top end here, the air box, the vent tubes, um, <clears throat> we're gonna disconnect fuel rail and a lot of wire harnesses. Uh, one of my tips here, as you're going along and you're removing things, Take pictures. Everybody's got a phone, or most everybody's got a phone. Take some pictures and just of every step as you're going along and you'll thank yourself as you're going back to uh, reinstall things, put things back together. 
I actually get a lot of questions, or not a lot, but a few <clears throat> on uh, uh, vacuum hoses. All the time people are asking me like, oh, I don't remember where this vacuum hose went, or can you send me a picture of you know this intake? Like, I don't know the, how this went on the manifold. Snap, snap yourself a bunch of pictures, takes you know just 10 seconds to do, and then you'll have that reference down the road. The other trick, or the other tip I have, which I highly recommend, Every little thing that you take off, like on the fuel rail, you got two fuel, you got two lines here, right? Label them. You know, if you have to do it A, B, and then label this A, B, just take a Sharpie right on there. Whatever you got to do uh, to label things, every little wire, every little connection, like this little wire harness here going to the thermostat housing, label it, you know. Put a little piece of uh, uh, masking tape on there and label it. You will save yourself such headaches. And by being meticulous and just labeling all these little things. Yes, it takes a little bit longer, but you're going to save yourself huge, huge headaches down the road. So after we remove, yeah, air box, fuel lines, uh, radiator hoses, we got that, the radiator drained, uh, wire harnesses, you're going to remove throttle body cable. Oh, see, I just disconnected my, my air hose there. Get this guy back in. <clears throat> and this uh, this is the engine that I rebuilt. So I rebuilt this one uh, from start to finish. So we're going to remove, yeah, all this stuff, all this on the top end. You don't have to remove the fuel rail and the injectors, but we are going to remove the intake and exhaust manifold. Down here, we're going to take the uh, serpentine belt, drive belt, accessory belt, whatever you want to call it. I like that things have multiple names. That's super helpful. So we're going to loosen, uh, we're going to loosen the power, loosen the power steering pump here, and then this will slide over, take the belt off. You don't have to remove the fan and the pulley because we're actually going to end up taking the radiator out. And on these YJs, it's easiest to remove the, uh, the whole front grill because this comes off with you know, a couple wire harnesses and like, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's a couple on the bottom, maybe like 10 bolts. But then once you have this front grill off, then you have all this great access to your engine. So that is super helpful as well. <clears throat> so we got the belt off, the power steering pump on the other side. Coming over here, alternator, we're going to take that off. And, you know, I just go ahead and take this bracket off because we're going to use... Uh, some of these bolts, uh, these mount where, where the uh, bracket is mounted, we're gonna use those bolts as our lifting point. Um, you know, I, I removed the distributor or the distributor cap. I think I left the distributor in, but uh, take the cap off plug or the wires, leave the plugs in so you don't drop dirt and stuff down in there. Um, go ahead and drain the oil, take the filter off because uh, that just gives you a little bit more room because you actually have to slide the engine forward a little bit. And as you can see with engine mounts, now engine mounts is a whole another deal. Uh, I think it's easiest uh, to go ahead and take the mount off itself and remove the whole thing. Um, I do have a video on engine mounts, so that's a good one to go reference because you can't just lift the engine with the, with this style of mount. You can't lift it straight up. It actually has to go forward and up to get it off of the off the mount, which is a pain on the passenger side. Driver's side, you can't really see it down there, but it, it can lift straight up. So where are we at? We're over on this side. I mean, if you start looking at it, there's really not a lot holding it to the engine. You know, because we got all these tubes and lines removed, right? Your heater core lines, and you got them labeled, which one goes where, because you got some tape on there. So moving down there, we're going to take the starter off. Right down there in the center, starter is coming off, and we're labeling all the wiring that we took off of where it goes. This goes to the starter. This goes to the solenoid. Whatever you need to label. Um, and then you have, like engine grounds so there's some grounds right there you're labeling all of those uh and then on this side i think that is it um 
This other wire harness, no. Passenger side, there's just not a whole lot. I mean, obviously your alt alternator, uh, your label on these wires, disconnecting those. So that's it there. And as I mentioned earlier, you're removing the uh, manifold, intake and exhaust manifold comes apart. Uh, intake and exhaust are obviously separate units, but the gasket and the bolts are, are shared. They're the same. Um, you don't, uh, you can't remove just one, not, not the other. That was another question at one point. Um, so yeah, and we're, you know, I mentioned we're gonna remove the front grill here. Obviously we're gonna remove the radiator too. It's a good time to replace the radiator if yours is all beat up and rusted out like mine was. Um, so then things like power steering uh, reservoir, we're just gonna clip it off to the side. And that's about it on the top. I mean, there's, you know, another ground wire going to your head. Um, a few more uh, vacuum hoses, electrical, but not a whole lot. Then underneath, I actually don't think I'll take the camera underneath because it's a bit of a pain. Well, maybe I will. Underneath, Quinn Trent. Hey there, welcome. Good morning, everybody. We are talking about engine removal. So then if, once you have everything on the top end disconnected, the bottom end, you got the starter down there. We talked about taking that off. Then it's uh, bolted up to your uh, bell housing for your transmission, right? Oh yeah, that's one thing I wanted to talk about was hook up your other mic, your audio stinks now. <laughs> blah, blah, there we go. Okay, that's how I test my mic. Blah, blah, blah. My mic, uh, I have a little wireless mic on the back, the receiver has a little bar and I go blah, blah, blah. Um, so underneath, uh, oh wait, what was I on? Oh yeah, disconnecting the bolts where your uh, engine is mounted up to the bell housing, there's like what, eight bolts, I think. Yeah, I think there's eight, maybe 10. There might be a few more. There's some bolts holding it together. The top two, they are quite often, what are they, E12, yes. They take an E12 socket, which is just, it's just why do they do that? So one of the recommendations, if you read lot like on the forms and you know, tips on removing this. Once you take those E12 bolts out, take it down to the hardware store, get yourself a good grade eight bolt, the same size, just a standard hex head. Why they put these E12? <clears throat> and if you guys don't know what an E12, here it is. Where is the camera? Focus. So anyways, E12, the top two bolts uh, on the bell housing to the engine. I don't know why they did that. Engineers, hey, we're gonna make these top two bolts different just because. Anyways, replace those because uh, they're just a pain. This one actually did not have the E12s on it. It had just a standard hex head. So somebody had done that for me before, because I bought this used, obviously. Underneath, um, it, it's a lot easier to kind of lower the transmission and engine a little bit to get to those top bolts on the back of the engine. They can be a super difficult to reach. So there's one I mean, I can see it on this one. So I, if I remove this again, I would try doing it without dropping the transmission, which if I was just removing the engine. So yeah, I mean, I can get, I can get my finger on it. And if I can get, uh, you know, some flex head sockets on there, remove that. Um, it, it's painful to do, but it, it can be done. The one on the uh, driver's side is a little bit easier, I think, than this passenger one. If you... If you just can't get it, you need to kind of lower the transmission so that you're tipping the uh, 
engine down so you can just get a little bit more room there, just a few more inches. Uh, you have to remove the skid plate. If you're doing this on a uh, mid-90s YJ, uh, the skid plate and cross member are all one. So you have to support, like if you just start taking skid plate bolts off, your transmission and transfer case and drive shafts are just going to flunk. You know, they're going to end up on the floor and hopefully not crush you. Um, so get a jack under there, a jack stand. Uh, when you're removing the uh, uh, skid plate, I unbolt the, there's some bolts holding the, uh, uh, transmission to the skid plate, unbolt those. I think there's two bolts, there's three bolts in total. There's the two, two bolts on the plate and then the one on the little arm going out. Take those three bolts off and then I jack up the transmission until I see the transmission start to lift up a little bit and the skid plate staying behind. And that's how I know that I have all the weight off of the transmission. Then once that happens, then I'll drop the uh, skid plate. And once the skid plate's out, you know, you get a jack stand under there or a, a jack. And then you can kind of lower your transmission a little bit so you can get to those top two bolts. Um, I think, what else do we got under there? <clears throat> Excuse me, let me grab my flashlight real quick because if you guys are doing this, uh, if you're doing an engine removal, engine rebuild, check out my video series where I, I go over every single step. Uh, this is just kind of a quick rough over and some tips because I'm going to miss something here. Oh, so yeah, skid plate, cross member. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of, I mean, there's some, uh, you know, wire harnesses that might be in your way, but nothing else. On the body, am I missing something? I mean, there's a wire harness over on the side of the engine there. I'd have to follow that. I don't remember where that one goes. I mean, how many bolts are there? Yeah, you got that off. One, two, three. Um, that one's out already. Four, five, six, seven. Is there seven bolts? Yeah, you got to remove all of them. If you don't remove all of the bolts uh, mounting the engine to the transmission it's not going to come apart <laughs> but i think that's it on uh, uh just a real rough over of everything you need to remove and like i said draining the fluids the radiator the oil um yeah now some tips or uh recommendations things i've learned on this rebuild um yeah, tip number one, take pictures of everything as you're going along. Tip number two, label everything as you're going along. Keep everything super organized. Uh, maybe I'm a little uh, obsessive compulsive. Where's my seat? I'm a little uh, obsessive compulsive about that, but man, I've, I've just run into problems before where, oh, like where does this go? And it just saves yourself. A it's just so nice to have things labeled and you know exactly exactly where things go, how it goes together. Um, if you're rebuilding the engine, uh, take it to a shop, a uh, machine shop, to have them hot tank it or clean it. I mean, I guess if you're, like I live in, in town in the city, so I don't have, you know, a big gravel lot and a pressure washer and a place to like clean an engine that's just covered in grease real well so I had a, a shop hot tank my engine uh, what else did they do they honed it so I, I do recommend just having a shop hone hone the engine for you the cylinders I did it myself I attempted an engine honing and I did it it worked out okay but it wasn't great and then uh the machinist at the shop, he saw it, he was like, yeah, like, I mean, I got off the glaze, but the hash marks, like, they weren't great. And here's, like, a nice engine rebuild I'm doing, and it was, like, 50 bucks or something for them to hone it and get the uh, the uh, hash marks just perfect. And it, it, 
Mine looked okay when I got it back from there. them. It looked just outstanding. So it's worth having a machine shop just go ahead and do the honing for you. They also did the, uh, the camshaft bearings. Um, you can do it yourself. You can buy a tool and kind of learn how to do it and wreck a few cam bearings. And, you know, it takes skill to do that. And I think for them to put the cam bearings in, yeah, it was not much. It was like, you know, $30, $40 or something like that. But I didn't have to buy a tool. I didn't wreck any bearings. They did it, you know, they do thousands of engines. They know what they're doing. They did it right. So there's just a few things that I recommend having a shop do for you. <clears throat> do I smell a stroker video coming up soon? Quint Trent. Oh, I wish. Um, I actually contacted uh, Engine Tech just uh, this week. I heard back from them and some of these, uh, like the crankshaft is still on back order uh, because of virus issues and production. So yeah, I'll get to this. It might be six months from now, but yeah, that's my ultimate goal is turn this into a stroker, put it in my 94 YJ, my other Jeep, and we'll go from there. Um, nice, at least we do speak Jeep language, everyone here in Sweden. <laughs> this one was uh, a bio. Uh, stroker build parts are on back order. I just swapped out. So I just swapped out a 4.0 out of a 98 Cherokee Sport, and you really helped me with the distributor install. Oh, awesome. Very cool. Yeah, you got to be careful with that because you can get it mistimed. I had Jeep girls here. I had to loosen my camshaft bolts to let it drop so the rear main would start sliding out. Um, you had to loosen your camshaft bolts to let it drop so the rear main would start sliding out. Huh. Hey, good morning. How are you? Good. One of my daughters just came into the shop. She's getting food. All right, she's gone. We can talk. Check out Dale's video. I think he's his first video. Oh, Colbert. Hey, Colbert. Good morning. Crankshaft, not camshaft. Okay, that makes more sense. Um, you had to loosen. Where were you at? The crankshaft bolts. Who was that? That was Jeep Girl, right? Da, 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 da. No, Hal? Hal. Rear main. Rear main's two piece. Yeah, like if you're trying to get, uh, like my rear main seal, like, yeah, I did that all, all as one unit, or, you know, took the whole crankshaft out. So it, rear main seal came out. <laughs> she meant crankshaft, yeah. Um, I think that's all though. I mean, my video series really covers everything. I did intend on this being kind of a, a short live stream, just a quick uh, update for that. Uh, my patron that asked the question, I told him like, Hey, you know, if you're around, jump on, you can ask questions. But I told him like this video would be available for his reference down the road. And if you have other questions, leave a comment down below and I'll try to answer uh, what I can. Um, but you know, as the title of this video said, like, can you remove an, in like, yeah, it's really not that hard. You need an engine hoist. That's one thing we did not talk about, but I do talk about in the video is like hoisting points. Like I used uh, where this bracket is, alternator bracket on the side, and then where one of the manifold bolts. So I bought some good grade eight bolts from the hardware store, same threaded size, and then the chain and a lift and just came right out. <clears throat> Mine actually, like, I've actually gotten a few video, a few videos, a few comments, a couple mean comments. Like one guy, I was saying like, what a dummy, like what? You don't remove it like that way, blah, blah, blah. And the reason I did it the way I did, the way my Jeep is pulled in, I can't get a, an engine hoist in front of the Jeep. Like I can get it there, but I can't back it up once the engine's lifted out. So I actually did it from the side. I had the front <clears throat> grill removed. I had the hoist here, so I lifted it from the side and like swung it out forward like that and then backed it out. It worked. It was a pain, but it worked. But some people, you know, on the video saw me doing it that way. Well, they, yeah, they don't know my shop. They don't know where I'm at. 
I, I couldn't do it from the front. They're like, you remove it from the front. Yes, if you got a nice long garage, a deep shop, and you can do that, great, go for it. But sometimes people, I don't know, they just uh, spout off their comments and don't, you know, really think that uh, sometimes other people's situations are different. So this has been 25 minutes. I do hope you guys have a Merry Christmas Eve Eve. And one of the reasons why I was keeping this short is I've got stuff to do. Tomorrow's Christmas Eve, big Christmas dinner. Cooking a, I think it's a 22 pound turkey. We're gonna have ham and all the fixins, so gotta do some quick uh, shopping for uh, stocking stuffers for my wife, gotta do that. Sometimes it's funny because I'll, like Christmas Eve, I'll be like wrapping <laughs> little things like, we're just gonna open this in like nine hours, why am I wrapping it? Anyways, thank you guys. Leave a comment down below if you have more questions on my experience with removing the engine because it was a lot of fun. Um, it was a daunting task to start with, but you know, just piece by piece did it and it came out great. The engine runs, it sounds wonderful. I'm really happy with how it came out. So, and yeah, I used Engine Tech, uh, their kit on it, and they're they're linked below on uh, what I used. I had no problems with any of their uh, products, and I do have to give a shout out to their customer service. I needed oh, I got some bearings. One kit of the bearings that I got uh, had a little like it was already it was packaged, but it had like some scratches on it. And I called them up. Hey, I got these and it had a few scratches on the bearings. They send me a new set right away, like no problem. So anyways, I hope you guys have a Merry Christmas and uh, leave a comment down below. And I do have a video coming Friday. Yeah, Friday is Christmas Day though. And Christmas Day is not a good day to release videos because they, they don't do well. Um, so I might put together just like a real short, like, hey, Merry Christmas, everybody. I do have another like, really nice edited video ready to go but i'll probably do that next week because yeah being a youtuber making uh videos you learn things and christmas day is not a good day to release videos because they just they don't do well <laughs> but anyways merry christmas you guys hope you have a good break and uh, i'll catch you on the next video